हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स टुडे आय एम हिअर टू रिलीज अ न्यू व्हिडिओ सिरीज ऑन द कन्सेप्ट सर्क्युलर क्यू डेटा स्ट्रक्चर बिफोर मुव्हिंग टू द कंटेंट आय वुड लाईक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सबस्क्राईब माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स अँड कीप द वेल रिंगिंग नाव लेट्स टेक अ टूर ऑफ लिनियर क्यू बिफोर मुव्हिंग to the concept of a circular queue we must know the details and the main disadvantage of a linear queue so that's why first of all let's take a tour of a linear queue so this is a linear queue a structure of a linear queue you must be knowing that always in a linear queue elements are inserted from the rear end and from the same queue elements are deleted from the front end now let's insert the element in a queue one by one so this is the first element which is inserted into a queue this one is the second one third one fourth one and the last one now let's consider that the capacity of this linear queue is of five elements and now the queue is full why the queue is full because all the elements have occupied the space from a linear queue now let's perform the dq operation from the queue so this is nothing but your front end of a queue this is nothing but a rear end of a queue and as all of you are knowing that the deletion of the element from a queue is done from the front end let's delete the first element that is 10 which is present at the front end of a queue and let's update the front pointer of this linear queue and here you can see that the number is deleted the element is deleted when we dequeue any element to remove it from the queue we are actually moving the front pointer of the queue into the forward direction and now we can't insert a new element because rear pointer is still at the end of the queue and here you can see that though we have deleted the element we can't insert the new element in our queue the even after deleting the element our queue is full though the space is available but we can't perform the any further operation onto the queue that is insertion operation onto the queue same observations i have written over here like as you can see in the above image after a bit of dequeuing the size of the queue has been reduced but still it is full and free locations can be used after the queue is reset it means that after deletion of all the elements of the queue we can reuse the free locations from the linear queue and this is the big disadvantage of a linear queue and this is called as the wastage of memory wastage of the space now if this is the problem then what is the solution what is the solution to the wastage of memory with a linear queue so the solution is a circular queue or it is also called as a ring buffer and it look likes in the given image so this is the video series for the circular queue data structure and again i would like to repeat why we should learn a circular queue concept because a circular queue is a data structure we can say that it is a linear data structure which avoids the wastage of space whatever we have seen just right now with a linear queue there was the problem there was an issue there was disadvantage of the wastage of memory wastage of the space which is get avoided by the circular queue and it utilizes the space the memory space wisely so that's why we are here to learn a new data structure that is a circular queue in this video series now let's start with the introduction to the circular queue why why to use a circular queue how 
it is more efficient than that of the linear queue because the circular queue which avoids the wastage of space that was there with the linear queue if the linear queue is there then after removing the element also we can't reutilize the space and that's why there was the wastage of space the disadvantage of a linear queue that is the wastage of memory space is overcome by the concept of a circular queue that's why here we are learning the concept of a circular queue as it is a circular queue it utilizes the space wisely so this is nothing but the introduction to a circular queue circular queue is a linear data structure there are different types of data structures from which the circular queue is a linear one the circular queue performs all the operations just same as of the linear queue and it is also called as first in first out data structure because it is based on the first in first out principle the last position is connected back to the first position to make it a circle that's why this queue is called as a circular queue what was the disadvantage of a linear queue once in a linear queue if it it becomes full we cannot insert the next element if there is a space in front of a queue because the rear end is not updated after deletion only the front end is updated but here in a circular queue after deleting we can perform the insert operation as the both end are connected here also there is no any updation in the rear end of a queue but as the both end of the, the circular queue are connected we can perform the insert operation how we can do all these things that very soon i am explaining you in the next video session before that let's start to know more about a circular queue so this is nothing but a linear queue and if i want to convert this into a circular queue then how it will look like so this is nothing but a linear queue and if i am trying to a to connect both the end of a queue and after connecting both the ends it forms a circular queue and it is the more sophisticated way to structure the or to explain the circular queue so this is nothing but the way in which the circular queue looks like the zeroth end is nothing but the front end of a queue the ninth element is present at the red rear end of a queue and they are both connected to each other to forms it as a circular queue till this session i have already covered the disadvantages of a linear queue which are overcome by a circular queue and then i have introduced the circular queue in previous videos now this is the time to learn about the features of circular queue so let's start with the basic features of circular queue circular queue is a linear data structure and it behaves just the same as of the linear queue so whatever the operations that can be performed on a linear queue in the same way we can perform the operations on a circular queue so here i have mentioned that the insert or enqueue operations are performed at the rear end of a queue and delete or dequeue operations that can be performed are at the front end of a queue just same as of a linear queue just same as of a linear queue a circular queue is also empty before performing any of the operation so initially the circular queue is empty and to indicate a circular queue is empty both that is rear and the front end are initialized at the minus 1 position so if you you have 
remember remembered the concept of a linear queue or the basic features of a linear queue you must have seen that all the features are same with respect to a linear queue now let's move to the structure of a circular queue initially to indicate a circular queue is empty we have initialized both that is rear and front end at the minus 1 position so this is nothing but the indication of a circular queue is initialized and it is right now empty it is not having any of the element available in a circular queue now let's move forward for the next feature now let's perform the insert operation onto the queue if whenever my queue is empty it means that the both front and rear are at minus position minus 1 position which supports to initialize both that is front and rear at the position 0 while inserting the first element in a circular queue so let's initialize both front and rear to the 0th position and now my queue is ready for the insertion of a first element let's insert a first element in a circular queue so here you can see that i have inserted a first element in a circular queue here you can see that a single element is available in my circular queue which is at the position 0 which was my first element was inserted in my circular queue and that's why both my rear and front pointers are pointing to the position 0 now let's go forward for the next insert operation here i am inserting few more elements in a circular queue for the insertion of new element in a circular queue always keep in mind that we supposed to update the rear pointer at the next position so here i am updating a rear pointer at position 1 which is the next position and here i am inserting a new element at position 1 let's insert the another element by updating a rear pointer to the next position and here you can see that after insertion inserting a new element which is appearing at the position 2 let's insert one more element at the position 3 is nothing but 33 let's move forward for the insertion of next element at position 4 and the element is 44 as it is a linear data structure the insert operation that we have performed that is into the linear fashion that is first from 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 and then 4 all these are in a sequence let's move forward for the next basic feature of a circular queue it's to perform the delete operation or a dq operation so now let's delete few elements from a circular queue now as i explained previously when we are going to perform the insert operation we supposed to advance the rear pointer of a circular queue in the same way whenever we supposed to perform the delete operation on a circular queue we supposed to update we supposed to advance the front pointer and let's see how it works so now currently my front pointer is at position 0 and now i am advancing it to the next position and it indicates that i have deleted the element which was present at the position 0 now again let's move to the next position to delete the element which was present at position 1 so in this way my queue circular queue is having currently three elements and my front is at position 2 rear is at position 4 now let's move forward here data is not actually removed from the queue after performing the delete operation so what happens so whenever we are going to perform the delete operation only the front front pointer is incremented by one position which is advanced to the next position and 
the q data is only the data between front and rear pointers hence if we are updating these the front pointer it indicates that the element is deleted and hence the data which is available outside of the front and rear range it means that this is not a part of a queue and that's why we indicate that element as a deleted element removed element from a queue and that's why we use the term deleted or removed now let's move to the next slide which helps you to learn about if we want to insert few more elements in a queue how we can insert so now while insertion we have to keep in mind that we suppose to update a rare pointer so let's update it and insert new element let's update rare pointer and insert new element update rare pointer and insert new element the same way we are here at the end of the queue now here you can see that this is nothing but the last position of a queue that is the upper bound of a circular queue now the next and more important question is can i insert more elements in my circular queue as my current rare is present at the position 9 which is nothing but the upper bound of my circular queue can i insert more elements in my queue so the answer is yes as this is a circular queue this is not a linear queue yes if it was a linear queue then we were not able to insert the elements at this position or in this situation but as the ends that is the starting end of your queue and the end the last end of your queue that both are connected and these are this is the space available it in my circular queue i can reutilize the space which was not possible with the linear queue so now let's update a rare pointer and insert a new element in our queue and hence we have reutilized the space we have wisely used the space as the both that is front and rear end of a queue are connected with each other and it forms a cycle can i insert more element in my queue yes i can let's update a rear pointer and insert a new element in a queue so in this way we have utilized a space wisely and that's why this circular queue is more efficient than that of the linear queue let's start with the working of a circular queue till the previous video we have seen that why to go for a circular queue by explaining the disadvantage of a linear queue and then i have introduced the circular queue along with the basic features of circular queue now by knowing these basic things with respect to circular queue let's see the working of a circular queue now let's see how circular queue works the first point is circular queue works by the process of circular increment that's why the name is given circular queue now what is circular increment so the circular increment is nothing but if and when we reach at the end of the queue while performing any either operation that is insertion or deletion we should start from the beginning again so it is called as circular increment now that circular increment is also helps to go round and round and that's why the name is mentioned over here is nothing but a circular queue so while incrementing the pointers that is rear or a front pointer while performing insertion and deletion operation respectively that we have to move or go round and round it is nothing but the circular increment of the pointers and that circular increment is performed by modulo division 
with the size of the cube that how this modular division helps us to go round and round that i am going to explain in this slide so how to go round and round so the first thing is every time we supposed to check either of the front or rear pointers have reached at the maximum size of a circular cube if they are at the maximum size of a circular cube that after that we supposed to set them to value 0 or to index 0 how we can perform that so for that for example the cube size is 10 so if it is the size of the q is 10 then the value of x that is nothing but we can say that either of the pointer that is front or rear that we have to divide it by 10 and then we have to take care of the remainder because we are using the modulo division method in modulo division the result will be in the form of remainder so if the remainder whatever will be the reminder that will be the next location next index position where we supposed to go why we are going to use a modular division because whenever this for example for the size of 10 q then the reminder will not be never greater than 9 that will belong to the range 0 to 9 only and that is our requirement to go forward for the indices that is between exactly from the range 0 to 9 and which is nothing but our requirement so that's why we are going to use the modulo division method which gives us a reminder and that reminder will be between the range 0 to 9 if the size is 10 and which is our exact requirement now we will see the formula which helps us to understand the circular increment for both of the pointers that is for front and for rear as well so whenever we are going to perform the deletion operation we will take care of the front pointer while performing deletion operation if my front pointer is at the end of the queue that is at the maximum size of the queue then we will use this formula to set to the next position so the formula is nothing but front equal to front plus one that is the next position and modulo division by maximum size of the q and whenever i will perform the next operation for example the insertion operation in this case we supposed to update the rear pointer circular increment in a rear pointer in this case we have to use the pointer that is rare and the formula will be rare equal to rare plus 1 modulo max size of the q so it helps to increment the rare pointer now these formulas helps us to go round and round or we can say that for the circular increment in a circular q now let's see all these things with the help of example here i am explaining you the insert example and let's start with the example now let's consider that my rare is at the position 7 and now let's go forward for the 8 position and for that the rare will be incremented by 1 and the value will get inserted. Now let's go forward for the next position and now my rare is at 9th position and I have inserted the value. Now if I want to insert a new value could I insert yes i can and for that i have to increment a rare pointer circularly to zero now let's see how we are going to do all these things now here i am just visualizing the things and in the next slide i'll explain you it with the help of formula so just visualize the thing like now rare pointer is at pointer zero or value zero or index zero and now i have inserted the value now can I insert one more element? Yes, I can because there is a space available in my queue. So let's increment rare pointer by 1 and it will point to, to the next position and here I can insert a new element in my queue. So in this way I have inserted two elements by circular increment in a circular queue. Now how? The modular division method helps us to perform the circular increment. Now here you can see that my rare is at position 9 
and if i want to insert a new element i will check whether the next position is nothing but zeroth position is available or not free or not for that i should have to move to the next position by using the formula now let's see the formula formula is nothing but current rare here this is current rare that is nothing but 9 which is pointing at 9 or at index position 9 9 plus 1 is nothing but 10 10 modulo division 10 what it will result into it will result into 0 because 10 is divided by 10 the remainder is 0 this 0 is assigned to rare and here in in the other way round we can say that rare is updated to the value 0 it is nothing but the starting of a queue so here by applying a formula i have updated rare to the position 0 if it is empty i can insert a new element and here you can see that the position is empty and i am inserting a new element now whether the same formula will help us to go forward for the next position that is at the one position now let's check what happens so now here my rare is at position 0 currently my rare is at position 0 so let's apply formula 0 plus 1 is nothing but 1 one modulo 10 what it will result into one modulo 10 the remainder will be one and that is nothing but the updated position of my rare pointer so that's why my rare will move to the next position and let's check whether at the position one the space is available or not yes the space is available and i can insert a new element at the same position so i am repeating the things like while moving round and round while going round and round the formula is helpful to calculate the front position or the rear position by using the modulo division method if we are going to perform the deletion operation we will increment front circularly and while performing the insertion operation we will increment the rare pointer circularly and both the formulas will help us to go round and round is nothing but the our aim to use the memory wisely in the circular queue so this go round and round and the modular division help us for circular increment so dear friends let's start with the current video session with the operations on circular queue so here i am explaining you what different operations we can perform on a circular queue so let's see which operations we can perform on a circular queue so the first operation that can be performed on a circular queue is nothing but the insert operation here we are going to insert the elements onto the circular queue now let's see the second operation that can be performed on a circular queue is nothing but the deletion operation so here in this deletion operation we can perform delete element from the circular queue and the next operation that can be performed on a circular queue is nothing but the display operation where we can display the contents of a circular queue what the elements are available in the current position in a circular queue that can be known with the display operation now let's see what different condition we supposed to check while performing these different operation so whenever we are going to perform the first operation that is insertion operation we supposed to check whether the queue is overflow or not if the queue is overflowing if the answer of this question is yes then we can't perform the insert operation we can perform the insertion element into the circular queue till the queue is not overflowing overflow it means that your queue is not having sufficient space to accommodate the new data into the circular queue now let's see the second operation is nothing but the delete operation and before performing the delete operation what the condition we supposed to check so the condition is nothing but the underflow condition 
what we supposed to do we supposed to check whether any element is available in your circular queue or not to perform the delete operation unless and until your circular queue is available with the elements you can't perform the delete operation it means that if here we are going to check if the queue is empty then we can't perform the delete operation because if no any element is available in your queue then then how could you delete the element from the queue so that's why we are going to check whether the queue is underflowing or not if the answer to this question is yes then we can't perform the delete operation and if it is not underflowing then we can perform the delete operation now let's see the third operation all of you are knowing the third operation is nothing but the display the content of a circular queue then what the condition we supposed to check to perform the display operation again we have to check here the underflow condition that is empty condition if your queue is empty if your queue is underflowing it means that nothing is available in your queue then you can't perform the display operation so in this way we can perform these three operations the first one is insertion in that case we supposed to check whether your queue is full or overflow or not to perform the delete operation we supposed to check whether queue is underflow or empty or not and again to perform display operation also we supposed to check whether the queue is circular queue is underflow or empty or not here if you are knowing the concepts related to linear queue the things are same the same way we are going to perform in a linear queue only the conditions are different while implementing them i'll explain you in detail while implementing the circular queue what we supposed to exactly check to perform overflow condition to underflow condition and so on right now theoretically i am explaining you the conditions that we supposed to check to perform different operations on a queue before moving to the detail of these operation we supposed to remember the points they are while performing insertion and the deletion operation we are keeping these points in our memory that we are going to use the rear and front pointers separately for these two operation that they are nothing but insertion and deletion operation so while performing insertion operation we will use the rear pointer while performing deletion operation we will use a front pointer so let's see the uses of the rear and front pointers separately so the first is nothing but the rear pointer tracks the last element of a queue while front pointer tracks the first element of a queue because always the insertion of insertion operations are performed at the end of the queue and the front operation are performed on onto the first element of the queue the second point we supposed to remember is nothing but rear pointer takes the responsibility to insert a element as i explained previously and other way around the front pointer takes the responsibility to delete the element and the third point we supposed to keep in mind is nothing but rear pointer helps us to check the overflow condition and the front pointer helps us to check the underflow condition so in this way the both the pointers helps us to perform insertion and deletion operation separately and now if we'll go forward to perform the delete operation what the points we supposed to keep in mind so the in this case to perform the display operation both that is rear and for front pointers we are going to use combinedly both the both the operators will use to perform the display operation so the first thing we are going to keep in mind is nothing but as a queue data is only the data between front and rear pointer the valid data is available between the front and rear pointer wherever front is pointing from that front to the rear pointer only it will be having the valid data and that will help us to display the content of a circular queue so while displaying the elements of circular queue 
डिस्प्ले द डेटा अवेलेबल बिटवीन फ्रंट एंड रेयर पॉइंटर ओनली बिकॉज दे आर ओनली हैविंग द वैलिड डेटा एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द डेटा आउटसाइड ऑफ फ्रंट एंड रेयर पॉइंटर आर नथिंग बट द आर नथिंग द पार्ट ऑफ द सर्क्यूलर क्यू दैट वी आर नॉट एट ऑल गोइंग टू कंसिडर दैम बिकॉज हियर वी आर गोइंग टू परफॉर्म द लॉजिकल ऑपरे लॉजिकल डिलीशन ऑपरेशन ऑन टू द सर्क्यूलर क्यू सो दो डेटा इज अवेलेबल दैट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू कंसिडर दैट डेटा बिकॉज ओनली द डेटा विल बी अवेलेबल इन अ सर्क्यूलर क्यू विल बी वैलिड इफ इट इज बिटवीन फ्रंट एंड रेयर पॉइंटर सो इन दिस वे दिस इज नथिंग बट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू द डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन दैट कैन बी परफॉर्म ऑन अ सर्क्यूलर क्यू विद द हेल्प ऑफ फ्रंट एंड रेयर पॉइंटर्स इन द डिटेल ऑल दीज ऑपरेशन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो to understand more about the operations that can be performed on a circular queue please stay tuned with my channel tech talks now let's start with the insertion operation on a circular queue first of all let's cover some basic features of circular queue where circular queue behaves just same as of a linear queue all of you are knowing this then insertion or the in queue operation are perform at the rear end of the queue where we will use the rear pointer to perform insertion or in queue operation initially we are going to assume that the circular queue is empty and to indicate that circular queue is empty we suppose to assign minus 1 to rear and front and here it indicates that the circular queue is empty so now let's start with the initial state of a circular queue the initial state of a circular queue as i explained previously both the values both the pointers both the indices that are front and rear that we suppose to set them to minus 1 or initialize to minus 1 which indicates that the queue is empty now let's see the same condition same situation where i am initializing both front and rear to minus 1 to indicate that our circular queue is empty now let's move forward for the insertion or in queue operation so this insertion operation or in queue operation this function is used to perform the insertion or to insert an element into the circular queue in a circular queue the new element is always inserted at the rear position or at the rear end of a queue so now let's see what the steps we supposed to follow while inserting the element on the circular queue so the first condition is to check if queue is full or not if the queue is full we will display the message queue is full and we will exit from the function otherwise we will move to the next step now if the queue is full we are not going to perform any operation now let's assume that my queue is not full so that's why i move to the next condition or next step is nothing but again here we have to check if we are inserting the first element or not if we are inserting a first element by checking the front and rear at minus 1 position it indicates that the queue is empty and now here we are inserting the first element so if we are inserting the first element then we supposed to set both the rear and front variables pointers indices to the position 0 and then we will go to the step number 4 directly otherwise if this is not the first element that is your previously queue was not empty already few elements are available then we will go to the step number 3 so let's see first of all what is the step number 3 here we have to increase the rear index by 1 but circularly how to perform circular increment that i have already exp explained in the previous video if you are not knowing the concept of circular increment then you can go through my previous video here in this write up corner i am explain i am i'm giving you a shortcut link for that video so that it will help you to move that video directly and after getting the concept of circular increment resume this video again 
here we have to check that if the rear reaches to the end then next would be the start of the queue that is the zeroth element of the queue to perform all these things the circular increment will help us and uh, we will use the circular increment to move forward now after that we have to go forward for the next and the fourth step will be add or insert or enqueue the new element in the position of a rare pointer and in this way we are going to perform the insertion operation now let's move forward for the next slide where we are going to start for the insertion of the elements in a cq and that's why both the front and rear that we have to initialize it to zero to insert the first element what was our first step the first step was to check whether the queue is full or not no queue is not full as it was initialized to minus 1 and now let's check whether the first element you are going to insert yes and if it is first element then both the rear and front pointer we supposed to initialize it to 0 and insert the first element go to step 4 and insert the element so i have inserted the element at the rear position now let's move forward let's insert few more elements into cq for that what we have to do for this we have to go forward for the next position by the circular increment to perform circular increment what we will do we will use this formula and here this formula will indicate you whatever the current rare position is there that we have to perform addition on that and then modulo 10 why 10 because the size of my q is 10 so that's why modulo size of the q so 0 plus 1 is 1 1 modulo 10 is nothing but the result will be 1 because it will find out not the division it will find out the remainder and remainder is nothing but 1 and which will get assign to rare variable and in this way this rare will get updated to the position 1 in this like like this and now we'll go forward for the fourth step where we are going to insert a new element after insertion of the new element let's insert a new one more element in a, your circular queue for that again let's perform the operation uh, to for the circular increment so what is circular increment again now my rare is at position 1 so now rare 1 plus 1 is 2 to modulo 10 is nothing but remainder will be 2 and my new rare will assign with the value 2 so let's remove this rare from this position and initialize it to 2 and let's go forward for the step number 4 and let's insert the element in this way the same the next value will get inserted by performing the circular increment 2 plus 1 is 3 modulo 10 result will be 3 the remainder will be 3 which will get assigned to rare so let's remove this rare and initialize it to the position 3 so here you can see that and then let's insert the element at the third position while performing all these things every time we are going to check whether the queue is full or not queue is not full here uh, you can visualize the thing like the uh, still few space is available in a circular queue and we can insert new element so now let's perform circular increment let's move forward and insert a new value now let's insert few more elements in cq the same way we have to perform circular increment and insert a value perform circular increment insert a value every time we are going to check whether the queue is full or not no queue is not full here we can see that still queue is not full then insert a new element perform a circular increment and then insert a new element now let's move forward can i insert more elements in cq no i can't but why why i can't insert a new element in my circular queue now let's see this situation number 1 where here you can see that your rare, rare is pointing at position 9 that is nothing but the maximum size of your circular queue and front is pointing at position 0 which is nothing but the starting or the beginning of your circular queue 
let's check this condition if my rear is equal to equal to size minus 1 and if my front is equal to equal to 0 if this is the condition then can we say like this the circular q is full can we say like this initially in this situation you can see that this condition is working and you can see that the circular q is full but let's check or think whether this condition is sufficient or not to give the answer to this question let's move forward for the situation number two now let's consider my rear is at pointer eight and front is at pointer nine let's check the condition if my rear is at equal to size minus one whether this condition is true rear is at eight position and size is 10 10 minus 1 is 9 this condition will become false as well as front is not at zero position and this and indicates that if either condition is false we are we can say that the condition is false the the total condition is false and here in this situation the it may fail that though the queue is full but this will not show that this will not give that the queue is full for that we have to take the help of another condition where we are going to check if the both that is rear and front are at the consecutive positions or not the, or the front is at the next position to rear or not to check that we will use the condition like rear is equal to front minus one rear is eight and front is at nine front minus one is eight if both are equal 8 equal to 8 both can both are at the same position then from these two condition if either one is true then we can say that the q is full and now this condition is sufficient and we can say that a circular q is full so in this way we are going to check both the condition in both the situation otherwise we can see that instead of checking these two condition the modulo division will help us to build a single condition and that single condition is helpful for both the situation so now let's check the condition this is the situation one where rear is at the max minus one position the size minus one position and front is at zero whether the condition modulo division condition will help us here you can see that rare is at position 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 modulo division 10, it will give the remainder 0 and let's check whether that the value of front is equal to equal to the equation result or not, that is 0 is equal to equal to 0, yes, because front is pointing at 0 position, so it is working, it is showing that the condition is true to indicate that my circular Q is full. Now let's go forward for the situation number 2 where situation number 2 if my rear is at somewhere at the position 8 and front is at position 9. Let's check the condition again. Rear is holding value 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 modulo division 10 what it will result is a, it will result into 9. Let's check whether the it is equal to the content of front variable or not. Yes front is at position 9. So 9 equal to 9 both the left hand side and right hand side are equal and then we can say that yes my Q is full and it indicates that for both the situation the modulo division condition is helpful for us and a single condition will help us to check all the situation and it will help us to indicate that whether the circular Q is full or not. Now let's see the time complexity for the insertion operation. The time complexity of NQ or insertion operation is big O1 because there is no any loop here as well as the straightforward algorithm is there and that's why the time complexity is big O1. The next operation which we are going to perform, which we are going to learn in the video series of circular queue data structure is nothing but the delete operation so here in this video i am focusing on the delete operation on a circular queue let's start with the delete operation it is also called as dq operation so this operation this function is used to delete an element from a circular queue 
so whatever the elements are available in your circular queue if you want to delete them then you have to use the function delete function or a dq function or dq operation in a circular queue just same as of a linear queue always whatever the element you want to delete that element will get deleted from the front end of the queue or from the front position of the queue that's why in deletion we will take care of a front pointer or front index now let's move forward for the steps which are required to perform the deletion operation so the first step is we supposed to check whether the queue is empty or not as i explained previously if the queue is empty then you have to just display a message queue is empty and you have to exit from a function because if the queue is empty it means that nothing is available to display so that's why display just a message queue is empty and exit from a function but if it is not then you have to move forward now i would like to explain you how are you going to check whether the queue is empty or not yes you are very correct so here we will check the front and rear pointer if we are they both are pointing to minus 1 it indicates that your queue is empty your circular queue is empty if they are not pointing to minus 1 position it mean indicates that queue is not empty and we supposed to move forward to the step number 2 so let's see the step number 2 in the step number 2 here we are checking that whether it is holding a single element or not how could you find out that it is holding the circular queue is holding single element yes you are correct here you have to check the position of front and rear if it both are pointing to the same position it indicates that it will be holding a single element and if q is holding a single element after deletion of that single element your q is going to become empty and always empty q is holding both the front and rear at minus 1 position so that's why whenever it will be having a single element after deletion of that element you have to keep in mind that you have to return the element which we have deleted as well as you have to set both the front and rear to minus 1 position to indicate that the single element was there and now it is deleted and now currently my queue is empty if a single element is also not present that is both front and rear are pointing at the different locations it means that it is holding more than one element then we have to move forward for the step number 2 i repeat in the step number 1 we are checking whether the queue is empty if it is empty display empty message and exit from a function if it is not in step number 2 we are checking whether the queue is holding a single element or not if it is yes delete that element by returning that element from the function and you have to set both front and rear to minus 1 position if this is also not the case then we have to go for a ordinary case in the step number 3 so what is step number 3 in the step number 3 we have to increment front pointer circularly to the next position now if you are not knowing the concept of circular increment then please go through my previous video and then resume this video again for the further remaining content of this video so now let's consider you are knowing the circular increment so perform circular increment on a front and then we will move forward now how this circular increment will help us the, in this circular increment if your front is at the end of the queue that is maximum size minus 1 position then after performing deletion operation you have to move forward the front pointer to the next position that is at the starting of the queue that is at the zeroth position of the queue to perform these task easily we'll use the circular increment which will help us to move that front pointer easily to the zeroth position if it is at the end of the queue let's consider you have incremented the front pointer circularly and now the next step is to delete the element delete or dq the element that is return the element whatever you you are having now you are pointing by the front position delete that element and you have done with the deletion of a single element with these four step 
For the deletion of the next element, again you have to start from the step number one. Let's check whether Q is empty. If it is not, let's check it is having a single element or not. If it is yes, then you have to delete that element and you have to set both front and rear to minus one position. If a single element is not there, more than one elements are there, then go to step number three. Perform circular increment on front variable and then delete the element. You have to perform these four steps repeatedly for the repeated deletion of the element from your circular queue. These four steps are helpful to delete a single element at a time. Now let's delete the few elements from a queue and you have to update a front pointer always. To understand this concept, let's start to delete the elements from a circular queue. Now let's consider this is a circular queue of size 10 where it is holding the position from 0 to 9. Your front is at position 0, your rear is at position 4. So ultimately it will it is holding the 5 values in this circular queue. Now let's start with the first condition. Let's check whether this queue is empty or not by checking the position of front and rear. No, both front and rear are not pointing at minus 1 position. It means that it is not empty. So let's move forward for step number 2. Where in step number 2 you have to check whether it is holding a single value or not by checking both front and rear at the same position. Here you can see that both front and rear are holding different values. It means that it is not holding a single value. Now let's go for the step number 3 and in step number 3 we have to perform the circular increment of a front variable. So let's perform the circular increment of a front variable. Here I am incrementing the, uh, circularly the front variable and now uh, let's increment the front to the next position and let's delete the element which was present at the position 0. Now uh, let's move forward for the next operation again perform again let's first of all let's check whether the queue is empty no queue is not empty and again not a single element is also available as far as the second step is concerned and the third step perform the circular increment let's increment circularly the front variable and now let's move forward for the next position and delete the element so you have deleted the element and now your front is at position 2 and rear is at position 4. Now let's perform few uh, more delete operation and before that let's understand the concept here data is not actually removed from the queue. Physically it is available there but the elements which are available between the front pointer and the rear pointer that only we have to consider as the uh, valid elements of a queue that I have already explained over here this statement so that's why whatever the outside of the uh, these front and rear range then that values are not the part of the queue and hence uh, we uh, use the term deleted or remove from the queue so now let's delete the rest of the elements by again performing the circular increment before that let's check whether queue is empty no Q is not empty, Q is not holding a single element and that's why perform a circular increment. After performing circular increment, let's increment the front to the next position. Now uh, how to apply this formula, uh, I think all of you are knowing this but uh, let's uh, explain it at least once that is 2 uh, currently your front is at position 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 modulo 10 is remainder is 3 and now updated value of front is nothing but 3. So it will get incremented to 3. After this, we have deleted the element as far as the step number 4 is concerned. Let's delete one more element. Let's check Q is empty. No, no Q is not empty. Q is not again handling, holding a single value and that, let, that's why let's perform the circular increment. After performing circular increment, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 modulo 10, remainder is 4 and front is equal to 4. So that's why your front is at position 4 and now you are ready to delete 33. Here you can see that let's check the first condition whether Q is empty. No, Q is not empty. Let's check the second condition whether front and rear at the same position. Yes front and rear at the same position. It means that Q is holding a single value. 
here you can see that rare equal to equal to front it indicates a single element in a queue and reinitialize both of them to minus 1 after deleting a single element reinitialize front and rear to minus 1 and here you can see that both front and rear are initialized at to minus 1 position it indicates that this number 44 is deleted from the queue and at the end here you can see that if front and rear are at minus 1 position there is nothing is available in your circular queue and it indicates that your circular queue is empty so in this way we can perform the delete operation on a circular queue the time complexity of DQ or a delete operation is big O1 because there is no any loop is available for the deletion of single element. If uh, the single element you want to delete then it will not require any loop. So I hope all of you have understood the delete operation. Now let's start with the combine operation that is insertion and deletion operation on a circular queue. Let's go through the basic features of circular queue first of all now i am considering that you must be knowing the basic features like the circular queue behaves just same as of a linear queue where like a linear queue circular queue is also performs n queue or the insertion operation at the rear end of the queue and delete or DQ operation is performed at the front end of the queue. If we are going to perform or we are going to start to perform any of the operation on a circular queue, initially your circular queue is empty and to indicate the circular queue is empty, we are going to point both front and rear at minus one position. Now here you suppose to consider that I am explaining you all these things with respect to circular queue implementation with the help of sequential data structure that is nothing but the array data structure. So that's why I am considering here both the rear and front at minus one position. So dear friends let's move to the next part to perform first of all the insertion operation. Here I am going to focus on the insertion operation algorithm in detail. So what is my first step? First step is to check whether my queue is full or not. But how to check the queue full condition? So here this is the condition to check the queue is full or not. This is the modulo division operation and that we will divide with the help of size of the queue. Now let's consider that the queue size is 10 or indirectly we can say that the size of array is 10. Now what we suppose to check? We suppose to check if both the rear and front, we are checking the position of rear and front. If front is to the next position of the rear, then we can say that the queue is full and that we can check with the help of this condition rare plus 1 modulo 10 if is equal to equal to front then the queue is full if the queue is full then we will display a message circular queue is full and we will exit from the function but if it is no then what will be the next step so the next step is we'll check while insertion of the element if it is a first element or not if it is a first element then we have to initialize both front and rear to zeroth position but how we will check that the it is first element or not by checking the condition front is equal to equal to minus one because if the front is equal to equal to minus one it indicates that currently your queue is empty and whatever the number whatever the element you supposed to insert into a queue that will be the first element and if it is a first element what we supposed to do we supposed to initialize both front and rear to zero and after that we have to insert the element so what will be the step to insert the element so to insert the element we have to follow the instruction like whatever the new element we are going to insert that we have to assign to the array where rare is pointing and that's why the statement is like array of rare equal to new element so here ultimately we are assigning 
new element to the rare position of the array okay after that now let's if i want to insert a more element then what we have to do or otherwise if this is not the first element what we have to do so here you can see that if it is a first element no if it is not then we have to go to the step number 3 and we have to increment a rare pointer circularly so let's increment a rare pointer circularly and here you can see that this is nothing but the circular increment if you want to know more details about circular increment you can go through my previous video and where i have explained all these things in detail so after incrementing rare circularly let's move forward to the step number 4 to insert the element and for the insertion of the element i have already explained you the steps so why we have to perform circular increment because this is nothing but a circular queue let's assume that you are at the end of the circular queue and you want to insert a more element then we are going to insert the element at the zeroth position why to the zeroth position because this is the circular queue and it avoids the disadvantage of a linear queue where there were the wastage of memory and this circular queue avoids the wastage of memory by incrementing the rare pointer circularly while inserting the element now let's see the example so we are going to insert few elements into the circular queue now let's consider that my circular queue is holding a single element how we can say that whether the both front and rear are pointing at the same position it indicates that it is holding a single element so my first condition we supposed to check whether it is full no now let's check the next condition whether whatever the inserting element is there is it a first element no so that's why we have to increment the rear circularly to the next position and here i am incrementing rear to the next position that is fifth position and we will insert the element at the position 5 now let's insert more one more element let's check the first condition it's full no let's check the next condition or move to the next step it's first element no perform circular increment rare is now pointing to the sixth position and now insert the element after insertion your circular queue will look like this now let's insert more element it's full no it's first element no perform circular increment it is pointing to 7 and now insert the element let's insert more element we have checked is it full no is first element no perform circular increment and rare is pointing to 8th position and then insert the element let's insert one more element let's check if full no is first element no circular increment that is pointing to 9 now and insert the element now we can see that my rare is at position 9 and here array size is 10 it means that my rare is at the max minus 1 position if this is the situation in that case can i insert more element in a circular queue yes i can but how so this is only the magic of a circular queue and the circular increment let's check what we have to do so first of all let's check it's full no is the first element no and now we have to perform circular increment now here i am i am explaining you in detail how we are going to calculate the rare pointer or the position of rare pointer now here you can see that currently rare is holding the position 9 or value 9 9 plus 1 is 10 10 modulo 10 modulo division is the method which we are going to use where it divides and returns the remainder so 10 divided by 10 remainder will be 0 so what the rare will be holding 0 let's check that whether this zeroth position is empty or not if it is empty insert the element and here move to the rare position and we will insert the element into the zeroth position so in this way the 
सर्क्युलर इंक्रीमेंट वर्क एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट द मैजिक ऑफ अ सर्क्युलर क्यू वेर इट यूटिलाइज द स्पेस वाइजली देन दैट ऑफ द लीनियर क्यू नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड फॉर द सेकेंड ऑपरेशन इज नथिंग बट द डिलीशन ऑपरेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स सी लेट्स गो थ्रू द डिलीशन ऑलगोरिदम वेर माय फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू चेक वेदर माय क्यू इज एम टी और नॉट वाई वी सपोज टू चेक बिकॉज इफ माय क्यू इज एम टी देन अल्टीमेटली इट विल नॉट बी होल्डिंग एनी वैल्यू एंड इफ इट इज एम टी हाउ कुड वी परफॉर्म द डिलीट ऑपरेशन सो दैट्स वाई इफ द क्यू इज एम टी we will not perform the delete operation but how to check the empty condition so to check the empty condition we will check whether front is initialized at minus 1 position if it is equal to minus 1 position then if the condition is true it indicates that the queue is empty display the message and exit from the function but if it is not it indicates that some values are available now after that what will be the second step second step is to check whether the queue is holding single element or not why we supposed to check this condition again because if it is holding a single element after deletion of that single element your queue is going to become an empty and to indicate that your queue is empty you have to reinitialize both front and rear at minus 1 position but to perform all these things how to check whether the queue is holding a single element or not by checking the condition if both front and rear are pointing at the same position it indicates that it is holding a single element and after deletion of that element you have to update both front and rear if it is yes then what we have to do return or delete front or a front element and reinitialize the front and rear to minus 1 position as i explained previously but if it is not holding a single element then we will move to the next step that is step number 3 and here we will perform the circular increment but here on which uh, pointer we will perform the circular increment we will perform the circular increment on a front pointer because we are performing the delete operation and always delete operation is performed at the front end of a queue so that's why we will perform the circular increment on a front variable now why we have to perform the circular increment because suppose if we are at the end of the queue that is at the max minus 1 position or at the ninth position in our case where 10 is the size of the queue if you are at the ninth position and still few elements are available for the deletion we have to move forward to the zeroth position and if you are at the ninth position it means that 9 plus 1 is 10 10 modulo 10 is 0 so ultimately front is initialized the position 0 by performing the circular increment and after that we will move forward for the step number 4 to delete the element so what the steps we supposed to follow to delete the element whatever the element is present at the front position of the array that we will assign to the deleted element and we will display that deleted element so in this way we are going to perform the delete operation and this was nothing but the deletion algorithm now we will see how to perform delete operation on to the queue so now let's see consider these are the three elements are available with us in our circular queue where we have to check whether the circular queue is empty or not if it is not let's check whether it is holding a single element no then perform a circular increment of the front variable and then delete the element so let's increment front to the circular uh, circularly next position and delete this element and after that let's delete one more element for that let's check whether the queue is empty or not no whether it is holding single element no let's increment front to the next position circularly here currently front is at ninth position move to the zeroth position by performing circular increment and then delete the element so after deleting your queue will look like this 
now again if i want to delete a element from your circular queue what i'll do i'll first of all check whether it is empty no whether it is holding single element yes because here you can see that both front and rear are at pointing at the same position it mean it means that the single element is present in your queue if the single element is present then what we have to do we have to reinitialize both the front and rear at a minus 1 position and then you have to perform the delete operation onto the element and here you can see that your front and rear both are at minus 1 position it indicates that your queue is empty it is not having any of the element and in this way we have performed both the insertion and deletion operation combinedly onto the queue now let's see what are the advantages of a circular queue it overcomes the drawback of linear queue where there was the wastage of memory and that's why the circular queue utilizes the space very efficiently than that of the linear queue now let's start with the circular queue operation where that insert operation i am going to explain you in the concept with respect to c++ programming first of all you must know that these two functions we can perform these two operations we can perform on a circular queue the first one is insert or it is also called as nq operation where while performing insert or nq operation we supposed to check whether the circular queue is full or is it overflowing and the second operation is nothing but delete or dq operation while performing delete or dq operation we supposed to check whether the circular queue is empty or underflow how to perform all these operation and how to insert or delete the element from a circular queue that i am going to explain you in these two consecutive video sessions so first of all in this current video let's start with the insert operation c++ program first of all let's start with the insertion algorithm step by step so the first step is let's check whether the queue is full or not while checking the queue is full or not we are going to check it with the help of operation like the rare plus 1 modulo 10 let's consider this is the size of the queue and if it is equal to front then let's say the queue is full there is another also way available to check the queue is full or not so let's start with the program so this is the function nq which is helpful to add the data or to insert the element into the queue let's consider this is the nq function for which we are passing a parameter integer value which we supposed to pass into the function so let's start with the function first condition we supposed to check whether the queue is full or not let's jump to the queue full checking function its return type is boolean whether if the queue is full i am going to return the value true otherwise i am going to return the value false so this is the first way with which we can check whether the queue is full or not let's check if my front is equal to 0 and if my rear is at size minus 1 position it indicates that my queue is full and let's return the true value but this condition is not sufficient as this is the circular queue my front can be at any of the position and rear should be at the at the its previous position this also the condition with which we can say that the queue is full so that position we can check with the help of if my front is just next to next to the rear it indicates that my queue is full but instead of checking these two condition i can use a single condition where i will check whether my front is equal to rear plus 1 modulo size so if my front is at the next position by applying this formula it indicates that my queue is full it will return a true value and this condition is true 
after returning back from this boolean is full function it will return back and it, it indicates that the function is returning value true if the condition is true then what we have to do we have to display a message queue is full and we supposed to exit from the nq function but now let's consider this condition is false queue is not yet full what we have to do we have to go to the step number 2 while moving to the step number 2 we supposed to check whether we are inserting the first element in queue or not how we are going to check that by checking the condition front is equal to equal to minus 1 because initially when the queue is empty we are initializing front to minus 1 if this condition is true it indicates that the queue is the currently empty and this is the inserting element is nothing the first element so while inserting the first element we have to initialize both front and rear to zeroth position so now let's perform this thing practically so if the condition is false let's consider the condition is false q is not full where we have to go we will return back from this its full function with the value false this condition if is going to become false and it will go into the else part so in this else part what we have to do the we have to check the condition whether the front is equal to minus 1 it indicates that my element inserting element is the first element so for that what we have decided we have decided to initialize both front and rear to zeroth position so we have done that now let's move forward we have initialized both front and rear to zeroth position after that we have to actually insert the element at the zeroth position so let's move forward for the inserting element wala step where at the in the array at the rearth position we are going to insert a new element let's perform the same tax practically where in this array at the rearth position we are inserting the element x which we have passed which uh, where x is holding the value which we are going to insert or nq into the circular queue so in this with this statement we are inserting the element at the rearth position and we are displaying a statement like this this element x element is inserted in our queue now after this now let's consider the inserting element is not the first element means this condition is false let's move to the else part what we have to do in this condition we have to move round in round and round by performing the circular increment with the formula and let's insert the element at the rearth position so this same condition let's implement practically so if this condition is false that is front is not at the minus 1 position means we have inserted few elements into the queue initially so we'll go into the else part and else we will perform the circular increment by performing round and round concept and here this is the formula where we supposed to move forward circularly to the next position if you want more details about all these things then i have already explained all these things in my previous video now insert the element at the rearth position and after inserting we are going to display a message inserted x element into the circular queue so friends i hope you must have understood the concept of the insert or nq function while checking the condition is full and we have inserted the value successfully into the circular queue start with the operations on circular queue where i am focusing on the delete function in c++ so which operations we can perform on a circular queue friends yes you are right so the first operation we can perform is nothing nothing but insert or nq operation and for that which condition we supposed to check we supposed to check the condition of is overflow or is full 
we have seen all these things in previous video for you i am providing you a shortcut key in this right up corner you just go through that if you are not knowing the concept about nq operation or the insert operation on circular queue now here i am focusing on delete operation it is also called as dq operation and for that which condition we supposed to check dear friends yes we supposed to check is empty condition or is underflow condition so among these two operations let's focus on the deletion operation so dear friends let's start with the deletion algorithm what i will do i'll explain you the algorithm step by step and in line with that algorithm i'll explain you the line of code that you can write down in c++ simultaneously so what is my first step in this deletion algorithm the first step is to check whether my queue is empty or not friends if my queue is empty what does it mean it means that my front pointer is pointing at minus 1 position what does it indicates other way around it indicates that if my front is at minus 1 position it means that my queue is empty if it is yes then what you have to do you have to display the message c queue is empty and you supposed to exit from the function so first of all let's perform this step in c++ programming language so let's start dear friends so this is the function to d to perform dq operation that is to remove data from the queue or to delete data from the circular queue so here i have written the function dq whose return type is integer why the return type is integer because whatever the number whatever the element whatever the value we are deleting from the circular queue that we are returning back from this function to the main function so that's why its return type is integer so now here you can think like that my circular queue is of type integer because it holds the integer type of values what is my next statement my next statement is nothing but i am declaring one variable y now let's check whether my queue is empty this is my first step now whenever you are going to call this function your control will move from this dq function to the is empty function you just look here where i have written a function to check whether queue is empty or not its return type is boolean why it should be boolean because it returns either a value true or false if your circular queue is empty the function will return true value if your circular queue is non empty then it will return the false value so what we have to write down in this is empty function so first of all you supposed to check where is the position of front pointer if front is at minus 1 position what does it indicates it indicates that my queue is empty and that's why we supposed to return a true value from this function now let's consider that my queue is empty the condition is true and if this condition is true this return statement will get executed and it will return from is empty function to the dq function and to the next line from where we have made call to this is empty function so this true value will get replaced with this is empty function call and this condition is going to become true if true then it enters into the if condition and it displays the message q is empty and this was our first step so i hope that you have un understood the step number 1 now let's move to the next step what we have done if this condition is true what we have to do i have explained just now but what is the case if front is not pointing to minus 1 it indicates that the queue is not empty means what the else condition or the false condition in case of no if the queue is not empty in case of false condition what we have to do we have to go forward for the step number 2 so the step number 2 is nothing but to check whether circular queue is holding single element or not 
how are you going to identify the single element and how or why we supposed to check whether it is holding a single element let's uh, elaborate this thing why we are checking this single element because after performing the deletion operation whatever the single element was there present in a circular queue is get deleted it means that your circular queue is going to form an empty queue after deletion of that element so that's why we have to take care of this single element now uh, you must have understood that we why to identify the single element but now how to identify the single element for that we have to check a condition that is whether my front and rear are at the same position we don't have to bother about the position means at which position the front and rear are that may be at the zeroth position first position second position or any of the position we can say a valid position till max minus 1 let's consider the max max is the uh, highest limit of your circular queue so any of the position but if both front and rear are at the same position it indicates that the queue is holding a single element and if queue is holding a single element that is if this condition is true what we have to do we have to return or delete the front item front element whatever which is present at the front position and we supposed to reinitialize both front and rear to minus 1 position as i explained previously because after deletion of the element queue is going to become empty and to indicate that queue is empty our front and rear both should be at minus 1 position so we will perform these operations if my front and rear are at the same position means a single element is present now let's move to our program till uh, this statement we have uh, done in the uh, previous half of this video now let's move forward that is if this condition is false that is front is not equal to minus 1 it indicates that the element are present in our queue so that's why it will go into the else part and after that in this else we will return a false value because my queue is not empty in this case this first half will not get executed it will go into the else part and it will return the false as a boolean value now here this if is going to become false so that's why it will go to the next statement that is into the else part and in this else part what we have written we have whatever the value which was present at the front that we are taking its copy into the variable y and after that we have to do that only one element was in a queue so that's why we have to reset the position of front and rear after removal of that element so now we have to check whether front and rear are equal to are at the same position it indicates that a single element is present and if this condition is true it indicates that we have to reposition the front and rear to minus 1 this was the second step of the deletion algorithm and now after that we have to return back the element y to the main function to to indicate that this was the deleted value now let's move to the next part let's consider the queue is not holding a single element okay we have seen that if the single element is present what we have to do now let's see if the single element is not present means if this condition is false it means that both front and rear are at not at the same position then what we have to do so if a single element is not present then what we have to do we have to move forward to the step number 3 in step number 3 we have to perform the circular increment on which we have to perform a circular increment on the front pointer why on to the front pointer because we are performing the deletion operation and to perform delete operation we supposed to increment the front pointer or other way round we can say that the deletion operation can be performed on the front position front pointer of a circular queue what is the formula to perform circular increment i have explained this formula in detail in my previous videos till still 
i am explaining you this in short is nothing but if i want to perform circular increment then i will use the modulo operator and now let's consider that my q size is nothing but 10 so that's why modulo division by the size of the q and what i will do i will go forward for the front plus 1 and then modulo division by 10 whatever the remainder will be there that is nothing but the my updated front and with this i can perform the uh, circular increment in the front pointer after circular increment what i have to do i have to go forward for the step number 4 and where in the step number 4 we can delete the element and that we have to initialize to the variable and these steps i am going to explain you with the help of program now what we have seen now we have seen that if the single element is there what we have to do but if it is not it will go into the else part okay friends so it will go into the else part and in else part what we have to do we have to perform the circular increment and here we have performed the circular increment by modulo division by size of the q after that what i have to do i have to return the y value which we have already collected which was the present in a front position that we have collected into y and that we are returning to the main function so in this way we can perform the delete or the dq operation on a circular queue so thank you dear friends for listening and watching my video if you like the video and uh, and it contains please do not forget to give the comment as well as you as well as you can uh, subscribe my channel he, here i am providing you a subscription link along with this i am providing you a shortcut link for the next video of this video series and the whole video series also i am here providing you for your reference in the form of playlist so thank you friends happy data structuring happy learning thank you